At our tool and die facility, the use of computer-aided design and manufacturing enables us to work more closely with our customers in developing designs for castings and molds for new parts. The use of computer-driven machines to cut the wax injection die has saved time and effort in forming complex surfaces that are difficult to machine by conventional methods. Robots are employed in various phases of production, particularly in shell building. Automated shell building techniques for the later, heavier layers of ceramic are more precise, efficient, and economical than manually applying stucco. Numerically controlled machines are used in a variety of milling, grinding, boring, and machining operations to bring final part dimensions to exact conformance with required specifications. While Hitchner is a leader in applying technology to the shop floor, our preeminence in the industry is due to the innovative foundry techniques which we have developed. Metal Casting Technology Incorporated, a Hitchner and General Motors Corporation joint venture, and the Hitchner Technical Center from which it evolved have defined state-of-the-art for the metal casting industry for many years. Our exclusive counter-gravity casting techniques, first developed in the early 70s, are generally conceded to be the most significant advancement in investment casting technology since the shell process. Prior to the development of this new technology, the method of mold filling by gravity pouring had changed very little since antiquity. Basically, molten metal poured in open air into an upright shell flows by gravity down the sprue channel through the gates and into the mold cavity. While simple, this time-honored practice suffers many limitations. As the molten metal is poured, the mold cavities are initially splattered with small droplets of metal. When there is adequate superheat, these droplets are remelted and absorbed into the metal casting. However, this is problematic in thin sections of the casting. Steel is highly reactive in air, which causes these droplets to oxidize slightly. This can interfere with their resolution or may leave small oxide defects in the casting. Since pouring mixes air and molten steel in a turbulent fashion, many oxides which become inclusions in castings are formed. The Steel Foundry Society of America estimates that nine pounds of reoxidation macro-inclusions per ton are formed during the pouring of large castings, and more are formed by typical small investment casting ladles. Gravity poured metal is almost always accompanied by the inclusion of slag, because slag forms and floats on the surface of the melt, adheres to the furnace lining, and is washed into the metal as it is poured. The use of teapot ladles along with clean linings and careful deslagging can help, but it's a constant battle. Finally, filling a mold by gravity pouring requires the buildup of pressure to force the liquid metal into the part cavities. When molten metal is poured into the shell, it first fills the lower, thicker sections of the mold. Air is trapped in the thinner sections, creating back pressure, which resists the flow of metal into thin sections. This causes the metal in the vertical sprue channel to rise. As it rises, the metal begins to fill the thicker sections of the upper layers, interfering with the filling of the thinner sections of the lower parts, thus inhibiting mold fill-out. The pressure available to fill a mold cavity is the height of metal above it, plus some effective inertia from the fall of metal from the ladle to the pour cup. This is highly variable and not very controllable. Hitchner has developed and put into production a process called Counter-Gravity Low-Pressure Air Melt, or CLA. The driving force behind this development was economics. However, a solid body of evidence has been generated to show that this process yields parts that are substantially better in quality than corresponding parts using the best gravity pouring procedures. In the CLA process, the mold is placed in a vacuum chamber with an open fill pipe facing down. The chamber is sealed and lowered until the fill pipe is immersed a precise distance into the melt. Vacuum is created, which siphons the metal up into the sprue cavity filling every section completely. As soon as metal rises above one level of gates, the full vacuum is available to fill that level, providing uniform fill-out of all parts in the sprue. CLA offers a controlled rate of mold filling at metal temperatures 200 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit lower than those required by gravity pouring, and with lower mold temperatures as well. Lower temperatures results in finer grain structure and improved mechanical properties. After a brief hold time has elapsed, allowing the parts and a portion of the gates to solidify, the vacuum is released, allowing residual metal in the central sprue to flow back into the melt. Only a short gate stub remains on the casting to be removed by a mass production cutoff machine. As a result, 60 to 94 percent of the metal cast is used to produce the product, as opposed to 15 to 50 percent in gravity poured parts, where much of the cast weight is in the sprue and gating.
Unlike gravity poured parts, which must be cut away from the central sprue, there is no need to leave room for the cutoff blade in the design of a CLA casting cluster. As a result, many more patterns can be assembled on a CLA sprue. The increase in pattern population per sprue may be two or three times greater than conventional assemblies, depending on part size and configuration. The ability of CLA to dramatically reduce inclusions caused by metal turbulence is easily demonstrated by a simple experiment. In slow motion, the effects of splatter and turbulence and the mixing of air in a poured liquid are obvious. Now compare the results when the liquid is siphoned. The advantage of CLA in controlling fluid flow is apparent. CLA produces castings with far less slag and non-metallic inclusions since the sprue is filled in a non-turbulent fashion from clean metal beneath the surface of the melt. Typically, counter-gravity cast metal contains only 15% of the inclusions of poured metal of the same analysis. This cleaner metal has been shown to reduce tool wear in comparative machining tests done under controlled conditions, giving increases in the life of cutting tools from 100% to 500% depending on the alloy. Very few after-polished defects are found in highly polished CLA cast parts, such as golf clubs. Inclusions are not merely nuisances for production to battle. They can cause premature part failure by serving as sites for initiation of fatigue cracks in highly stressed parts, even though they may not be detected visually after processing. The basic CLA process has, in the years since its development, lent itself to many adaptations designed for specific applications. The counter-gravity low-pressure vacuum process, CLV, employed by Hitchner's gas turbine division, applies counter-gravity casting technology to reactive alloys that must be cast in an inert or vacuum atmosphere. Briefly, metal is melted in a vacuum in the lower chamber of the casting machine. The hot mold is introduced in a separate upper chamber and a vacuum is created there. Both chambers are backfilled with argon. A valve is opened and the melt is raised until the snout of the sprue enters the molten metal. Additional vacuum is applied to the upper chamber to draw the metal up. The vacuum is released after the parts and gates have solidified. Hitchner's counter-gravity processes provide the ability to cast sections as thin as 15 thousandths of an inch about half the thickness of a plastic credit card. The wax patterns for these aerospace components cast using our CLV process are so thin that type can be read through them. Counter-gravity casting has been integrated with full automation at Hitchner's Ferris division in the form of a multi-station computerized rotary casting machine. Utilizing a patented supported shell version of CLA, this new generation casting machine dramatically increases production, throughput, and efficiency. In this process, the mold is enclosed in a chamber. The chamber is raised to a sand filling valve, which loads dry sand around the hut shell. Supporting the mold with sand allows a reduction in shell layers and inhibits mold failure. When the sand is at the correct height, the valve closes. The chamber is rotated to the casting station. A vacuum head is inserted into the casting chamber, compressing the sand. The chamber is lowered until an automatic sensor indicates that the fill tube is submerged in the melt to the optimum depth. A vacuum is applied, rigidizing the sand and drawing metal up into the mold. After the dwell time has elapsed, the vacuum is released, returning the metal in the central sprue to the melt. The chamber is raised, the vacuum head returns to its rest position, and the cast mold is moved to the discharge station. As this is done, other chambers are moved to the loading and casting stations. When the mold is discharged, the sand is separated from the shell and is recycled. Two 1,000-pound furnaces on a rotating platform provide a continuous supply of molten metal for high-volume production. This fully automated system provides absolute control over time, temperature, and fluid flow, achieving previously unattainable levels of casting quality. These accomplishments, and many others like them, offer dramatic testimony to the superiority of Hitchner technology in the metal casting industry. Whether inventing new methods of casting or computerizing the shop floor, we are continually striving for new and better ways to create the best possible product.
In markets ranging from aerospace and automotive to hand tools and sporting goods, the Hitchner Advantage is our ongoing commitment to improving systems, techniques, efficiency, and quality.